Hi all, welcome back. This is Isaac. Uh, and today we are going to learn about how to limit users' uh, space on the file system. In other words, how to limit how much space each user on your system or group on your system can use on your local disks. Um, this kind of limitation is commonly referred to as file system quotas and most operating systems and file systems types uh, support this. Uh, so today we're going to look at how to do this uh, using Webmin. Uh, the f first thing that we're going to have to do is make sure that our software package for uh, managing quotas is installed. Uh, most versions of Red Hat based uh, operating systems, CentOS, Red Hat Enterprise, uh, Fedora, and the like, come with the quota package pre-installed. Uh, a lot of Debian, I know uh, Ubuntu, which is what I'm running here, does not uh, come pre-installed. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to System, Software Packages, and we are going to install the quota package from App. Uh, and this is all the, the monitoring and limiting and whatnot uh, user space packages that are needed to install to manage quotas. Once we've done this, we can go to disk quotas, but we're going to have a nasty surprise waiting for us. No local file systems can support quotas. You can enable quotas for a file system in the disk and network file system module. So to enable quotas, there are two things that have to be done, well, three things. The first being installing the quota software, which we already did. Beyond that, we have to edit the mount options of the file system to support quotas. And once we've done that, we could run the user space quota limiting software to actually configure the quotas. So we're going to go over to the disk and network file systems module. And we're going to select uh, our root file system. Uh, or whichever other file system it is that we want to enable quotas on. Um, now, I'm not going to go into the ins and outs of how you should set up partitions on your server to begin with. Um, that that could be a, a tutorial in and of itself. The server I have here, it's a very generic server. It's meant to be used as a demonstration machine for these videos. As such, I didn't really feel any necessity to break things into different partitions. Classically, if you're in a situation where you have a lot of users and you want to give each user their own bit of space, normally you're going to want home to be in its own partition, and that's where you're going to enable um, quotas. What we're going to do now is just the, affecting the, the mount options um, it's not going to actually enable the quotas or doing anything else. So we're going to go into the mount point. I'm going to edit the mount point for slash. You need to edit the mount point for each and every uh, partition where you're going to want to enable quotas. And down here we have use quotas. Uh, and we could select user only, group only, or user and group. Normally you'll want to select user and uh, group unless you have a very, very busy file system and you know that you want to optimize it only for group quotas or only for user quotas. Uh, normally you won't have to deal with that. So we're just going to set user and group and save. Now we're going to go back to disk quotas and now we see that the file system slash, uh, which we've enabled quotas on, um, can uh, be used for quotas. However, the user and group quotas are still inactive. Uh, I'm going to press on Enable Quotas, and then I'm going to explain what it does. So here we go. Um, enabling quotas is going to cause... That went really fast. <laughs> enabling quotas uh, is um, an operation that could potentially take a long time. It really depends how much information is already on the uh, the file system and how many files it has to start sorting through. But it's going to have to stat each and every file, see who the file belongs to, and, and start tallying up which users and which groups are using how many uh, files and how many megabytes of space. 
if you have a very big partition with a lot of files and a lot of space being used, that's going to be an expensive action, enabling the quotas. Um, now that we have enabled the quotas, we can both view quotas for everyone or edit specific quotas. So first I'll show how we can use uh, view the quotas. So we're going to look at all the user quotas for slash. And these are the default quotas that we have. Uh, and here you can see a bunch of the users on the system, root, clamav, mysql, user, man, margol. Uh, margol is the user, if you remember, that we set up a uh, website for. Um, and we could see the amount of uh, disk space that each user is uh, currently using. We could see the soft limit and hard limit, which I'll talk about in a bit, uh, and the grace period left. Uh, and we could all see the amount of files, in other words, the, the amount of files, regardless of how big they are, that each user uh, is doing. Uh, so putting enabling quotas could actually be useful even if you don't necessarily want to enforce it, even if you just want a quick way to see how much, who's using and how much. Uh, I am going to remind you that it is a somewhat expensive operation since every little piece of I.O. operation now needs to also enable the, the, the quota um, data every time uh, a file is created or saved or otherwise written to. Uh, so we're going to go to user user, and we're going to edit it, his quota. Uh, from this view, we could just click on it. Uh, from the view before, we could just as easily uh, enter the user's name. So there are two types of limits uh, when we're dealing with quotas. There's a soft limit and a hard limit. A hard limit means if the user uses this much, we just won't let him write anymore. He could be in the middle of writing something very important and he just won't be allowed to save. Uh, since that's kind of harsh and warningless, we ha also have what's known as a soft quota. The soft quota is how much space we expect that user to actually be using, but we'll give him some slack space, which is the difference between the soft and the hard, of extra space that he could use temporarily for a small amount of time just so uh, he doesn't run into problems. So let's say I want user user to have 100 megabytes of space. So I'm going to set user user to have 100 megabytes of space, and I'm going to give him a hard limit of 110 megabytes of space, which means if he goes between 100 and 110, it'll let him, uh, and it'll warn him, but it'll let him use that extra space for a while until the grace period, which we'll get to soon, expires. And once that grace period expires, uh, even as long as he's over the soft uh, limit, it'll it'll start um, it'll start limiting him. So we're going to update the quotas, uh, and now we can see how much is in use: the soft limit and the hard limit. Now, if we scroll down to the bottom, we can also see two other nice. Um, pieces of information here. We have, first of all, the default settings for uh, new users. So if I know that I want a new user to have by default 100 megabytes, I could set the same thing up right here. And we'll give 125 to hard. And now if I add a new user to the system later on, they will be set up with an initial quota of 100 megabytes and 100 uh, uh, soft and 125 hard. Uh, obviously, I can go back up to the to the list up here and change that later on if I want to to change it for a specific user. Uh, 